exercise 5.3, which is to prove exercise 5.4. So we have half the proof done for us, or something like that, and then we have to finish it up. So define t like so, and then we got to prove that it's a bounded linear functional, and that the limit as th that this thing goes to zero. Um, so anyways, uh, to prove t is linear, let x and y be elements of x, and lambda be some scalar in, I think k is what we've been using. This is either r or c, or I think I've even heard that it suffices to take any field that contains the real numbers as a subfield, but whatever. Um, then let's just let's just do it. T x plus lambda i. Just by definition, it's the limit of T n x plus lambda y, and this is a limit in k, and limits in k work nicely. So this is just you just push it through the linear stuff, then we bring it back to t. So there we go. Now for boundedness, suppose the norm of x is less than or equal to, hmm, should we use this definition? Yeah, let's use this. Actually, no. Let's go norm of x is equal to 1. Then, tx is just the limit of tnx. And limits behave nicely with norms, so we can pull it out. Um, but this is less than or equal to the limit of tn times x. But this is just equal to, since the norm of x is 1, the limit of tn. And this is finite since tn is Cauchy. Now, uh, he makes this parenthetical note, in fact, norm of t equals a limb, so this inequality here is a little superfluous, but, I mean, we're not looking to find the norm of tx. All we're, we're not looking to find the norm of t. All we're looking to f verify is that it's less than infinity, so I really don't care what it ends up having to be, at least not for this problem. Um, so, hence... Since it's a bounded linear functional, it is in here. Finally, and now, now this part is just really easy. You could probably just, yeah, limits behave super nicely with norms. So you could probably just bring it in at this stage. I want to be a little more careful just by definition, supremum over the norms, this is equal to 1, that's equal to the supremum of, now we can just bring in the limit tnx minus tx. By the way, this is a limit of a supremum, it's not the limb soup, it's a different thing. Actually, ironically, limb soup is often described as, oh wait, no, it can be the limit of the supremum, but it can also be defined as the infimum of the supremum, which I always found really weird. But anyways, so this is zero, so tn goes to t in lxy. So every Cauchy sequence in LXY converges in LXY. 
Hence, something, something, something complete. And this completes the proof.